Chapter 4 Pandhari Bhajan When this body was passing through the age of seven years, certain infectious diseases like cholera and plague were spreading widely in the remote village of Puttaparthi. People stopped sending their children out out of fear that they might get those diseases. Strict instructions were given that no one should visit or partake of water in the others' houses. The atmosphere in the village was surcharged with mortal fear. These restrictions were being observed by one and all in the village, including Grihamamai Ishramma. Kondamaraju was a very orthodox person. He never took even water in anybody's house. He confined me to the house and never used to allow anyone to come near me, lest I might be affected by those infectious diseases. He used to be so strict that he did not allow even Venkama and Parvatamma, elder sisters of Swami, to come near me. However, I used to go out every now and then without his knowledge. Later, when he came to know about it, he would plead with me lovingly, saying, You should not go out like that, Satya. The house in which we lived was located in a street where Boyas, the hunting community, were living. Kondamaraju, therefore, directed some Boyas to be my bodyguards. He instructed them, Keep a watch on the movements of this boy. If you find him anywhere in the village in the company of others, bring him home immediately. Thus, he made strict arrangements restricting my movements. But, do I submit myself to such restrictions? I would stealthily go out without being noticed by anybody. Some boys, however, out of love for me, used to come to a house without the knowledge of their parents. They were all aged between six and eight years. A group of ten to twelve boys used to gather round me. They would move along with me constantly wherever I went. One day, they came running to me out of fear and pleaded with me, saying, Raju, we understand cholera is rampant in our village. We also understand that it is a deadly disease and the person infected with this disease will die within a short time. We don't know what will happen to us. We are very much afraid. Then, I assured them that nothing would happen. I tried to instill courage and confidence in them, saying, You need not be afraid. The body is bound to perish, however much we try to protect it. Growth and decline are bound to occur in the life of a human being, even if one were to live in a forest. Hence, don't be afraid of death. However, you make efforts to keep the disease away. For that purpose, engage yourself in the constant contemplation on God. The children then inquired from me, which God, Rama or Krishna? They were very innocent boys. Puttaparthi was a small hamlet in those days. It had a population of only 106 people then. I suggested to the boys, that we all would conduct bhajan in the village at six o'clock in the evening by installing an oil lamp at a prominent place. They were in a dilemma as to which bhajan was to be sung. Then I composed some devotional songs. I told them, Dear children, we need not search for God outside. He is very much imminent in us. The children went round the entire village singing bhajans as instructed by me. In those days, people in the village used to be very much afraid of ghosts. Hence, they dared not go beyond the Satyabhama temple after five o'clock in the evening. They thought that that was the boundary for the village. However, 
I tried to infuse courage and confidence in them, explaining that there were, in fact, no ghosts or devils at all. I could make the children bubble with enthusiasm to drive away the diseases of cholera and plague from the village with faith in God and constant contemplation on Him. I told them to tie jingle bells to their ankles. I gave castanets in their hands. With these paraphernalia, we walked up to the river Chitravati singing bhajans all the way. By the time we covered the entire village and its boundaries in three days singing bhajans thus, the diseases of cholera and plague disappeared forever. Thereafter, the parents of these children came to me and requested, Raju, you instilled courage and confidence in our children and made them very enthusiastic. You be a teacher to our children from tomorrow. You teach them whatever you know. No other education is necessary for them. From that day onwards, all the children started coming to our house for tuition. I was being addressed as tuition master. One day, the parents of the children came to me and requested me to receive Guru Dakshina, some kind of remuneration as a token of gratitude to the teacher. How much of it? A quarter of an anna per month. The children used to come for tuition in the evening after taking some sankati, ragi gruel, and stay with me for the night. I taught them some spiritual and moral topics also along with the alphabets. I used to tell them, you should not move in the company of bad people. You should not lend your ears to what they say. You should not speak bad words. Also, you should not criticize others. You must cultivate good qualities. You should respect your parents and elders. You should not harm anybody. You should not hurt others' feelings. We must do our work properly. Besides, we must undertake social service. Whatever good things we learn, we must teach them to others. In due course, a change for the better was evident in the children by such good words. In addition, I trained some younger children in bhajan singing and conducted pandhari bhajans with their participation. These young boys used to tie jingle belts to their ankles, hold castanets in their hands and go round the village singing bhajans during early morning and wake up those who were still sleeping. In those days, the villagers used to sleep till 7 o'clock in the morning. But once I started Pandhari bhajans with the help of these young children, they would get up at 5 o'clock itself, take bath and offer their prayers to God in that serene and holy atmosphere. In fact, it was only due to the efforts of Satya Sai Baba that contemplation on God started for the first time in Puttaparthi. Gradually, it spread to the other villages also. Due to such transformation brought about by my teachings, the villagers addressed me as Vedanti, philosopher. The children used to go round the village every day early in the morning and exhort the villagers by singing such songs as Wearing the ochre robes, holding the symbols in hands, girding up the loins, destroying desire and anger, and treading the path to divinity. Come, come, O villagers, come quickly. Join us singing, Hail to Lord Panduranga. That was, in fact, the Nagar Sankirtan we conducted in the villages in those days. And when was it started? When this body was barely seven years old. While we were thus singing and dancing and going round the village early in the morning, waking up the villagers from slumber, Subhama and Ishvarama used to experience bliss. Subhama too used to participate in that Pandhari bhajan, clapping her hands rhythmically. In those days, a bag of puffed rice was available for one anna. She used to purchase one bag and distribute to the children some quantity as prasadam. Thus, I used to spend my time in the propagation and teaching of spiritual matters right from my childhood. People from nearby villages also used to visit Puttaparthi to witness these Pandari bhajans 
and get totally immersed in them. The reason why I am relating all these stories is that students should cultivate divine feelings right from their childhood.